feels like we were just doing this and back up here in the fall we've had a uh what are we in week 12 right now i think we started first day school started which was like august 22nd and uh it's been 12 great weeks not good but great uh kind of picked up where we left off uh after the the hard fought battle against miami in the regional and coral gables uh to this this ball club's credit, we picked right back up where we left off uh, from a preparation standpoint, from a retention standpoint, uh, baseball IQ and and just acumen and, and what we're trying to do in our system, and uh, the leadership is there uh, as as good as I've seen it since I've been back here, and uh, you know obviously a huge addition for us was Gunnar Leger and uh, adding some some arms uh, to the stable and and. Uh, Boy, they they showed out yesterday. It was it was really really good to see. Uh, a us get to play outside competition. Uh, B get a walkthrough of what a Sunday day game looks like. We were able to stick exactly in our routine. We kind of simulated hosting a regional and uh, having to win one out of the first two uh, in order to advance. That's what we'd been working towards for twelve weeks, uh, just through keeping a record of of did we win the day or not win the day. And our record's way up there right now from an attitude and effort standpoint. Point. And so we were able to simulate that a little bit. And I'm a big believer in using your imagination to put yourself in places that you want to be, maybe not where you're at right now. Uh, and our ball club and coaching staff have done a tremendous job of that. And uh, it was good to see us get back to the feeling, and it's been a while, of uh, a two-run lead felt like an eight-run lead, a three-run lead felt like a ten-run lead, uh, just based on how well we play defense. Uh, Coach Tibb does an amazing job with our defense. We, I think, led the country or in the top three last year, set a school record. Uh, and then what Gunner's doing uh, with, with the pitching staff, and you can see the difference already. Uh, we're going to bang. We're going to hit. I don't think that's that's any secret. Uh, but to, to know that now we've got both sides of the ball together and uh, each other, they have each other's backs. Uh, it was it was a good feeling. It was a it was a I don't think I'm going to have as many gray hairs type feeling, uh, you know, and then you, you look up in the last inning yesterday, we had three walks and that was that was kind of what we were battling a bunch of a year ago. And so I think we to to our players and coaches credits i think we played the first 11 innings uh without giving up a walk uh we played the first 10 innings without having an error played the first 10 innings without giving up a run uh which that's formula is going to win you a lot of games now you know we were simulating a regional and and make no mistake nichols is a really really good team uh that could be a uh you're, if you did host, you know, which is our goal, that 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 could be a team you play right away. And uh, I would fully expect them to push being a regional this year. The, some of the arms they ran out were, were frontline type arms. And of course, the kid they started yesterday is going to be a really good draft pick. Uh, but I like the way we threw the baseball, played great defense and had some really tenacious at bats. Some of the pitchers that kind of came on late last year. Let's talk about their transition, where they are. Well, Fluno's been on the shelf all fall. He's kind of rehabbing. He's a little bit banged up rehabbing. Uh, nothing major. Uh, and he could go right now. It's just precautionary. Uh, Moody's made a big improvement. JT Etheridge uh, it was, was dominant yesterday. Uh, David Christie, same thing. Blake Marshall, uh, same thing. And then Stephen Cash made an arm slot adjustment, and and uh, he was just he was a, a tough assignment on their lefties yesterday. I was real happy with where all those guys are at. But are the, could their roles be different this next season, or how do you, or is it still too early to kind of know that? I don't know that they'll be that much different. Uh, you know, Big JT will be at the back of a game, and uh, the difference is there's just more JTs. And, uh, you know, I think Steven's going to provide a, a matchup issue for teams. Uh, and, and Moody, kind of his utility role, can do a little bit of everything. Uh, Blake Marshall at the back of the bullpen. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. And then Fluno, of course, I think will be one of our three guys on the weekend. Coach, you, you lost several of your locker room leader type guys last year, Carson Rock, Fort William Brock, Keith Hood. Who's kind of stepped up in that role so far through the fall as leader of this 
We did, and those guys were tremendous. Uh, miss them every day. In fact, Rocco and Ju were back last week, which is great to see those guys. Uh, Jake Hammond's come back and done one of our Bible studies, which is great. Uh, but what you can't underestimate or overlook is we also had Kyle DeBarge on that team. And he's still on this team. And uh, he was a huge leader for us a year ago and even more so for us this year. John Taylor stepped into that role. And we've got Dylan Toy back. Uh, even though he's red shirt and he had Tommy John, uh, he's definitely one of our alphas for sure. And so the leadership has uh, – it's, it's been tremendous. And, look, it's passed down, right? And so the guys that went before them did a great job, and they're just taking uh, where they left off and running with it. We kind of talked about it a little bit last year when Carson was coming in to his junior season. Of what was the next step that you want to see out of him? Now you have Kyle Barge coming into his junior season as well. What is the next step for him to becoming, you know, an elite talent or continuing to be an elite? Yeah, I mean he's he's one of the best players in the country uh, for sure, and he's going to go in the top three rounds. I'm willing to bet. Uh, you know, he may go at the top of the top three rounds. I don't know. Uh, but I think it's just going to, you know, you can always get better in this game. But from a physicality standpoint, the kid is, he's strong. Uh, he's fast. He can throw. Uh, he makes a ton of contact. I think uh, the things that he can continue to work at would be more finer point deals uh, ju just at the plate. But nothing, uh, stuff that we, we don't have time to go into here. But he is as close to to polished as you're going to find uh, from a baseball IQ standpoint, a competitive standpoint. Uh, you know, he, he has a little bit of everything. And what DeBarge has that uh, most people, 99% of the population in the world don't have, is he has it. And whatever that is, I don't know how to define it, uh, but you want that guy on your team. You had young hitters who had flashes at times last year and maybe didn't quite finish it. How, how are some of those guys like the young freshman hitters. That I think that's what's been encouraging about this fall. Part of it is, has been the u and the Stellies and the, the Robies and Amity and, and those guys and, and Stephen Cat. There's just that that uh, sophomore class has come. They had great summers, okay, uh, and they've come back and been, been, you know, night and day from where we started with them a year ago. And then the guys that we've brought in uh, have done an amazing job as well as I've seen of assimilating to the pack culture and what we're all about. And it gets good when that transcends, you know, not just your team, but it spills into recruiting classes and incoming players. And uh, so they understand the expectation and the mission and, and the standard of what it is that we're doing. Coach, you're talking about Gunner a little bit. Uh, what is it like having him uh, back and, and the effect that it's, it's bringing to the team? It's, it's definitely uh, had a, a major uh, positive impact, George. Uh, you know, I, I call it – a, he knows his stuff, and it's not like he was selling insurance and, and just, you know, forgot about the game. This guy has been preparing for this opportunity, and, you know, good Lord opened a door and he crashed through it, and good for him. And uh, so he came in prepared, and he came in knowing what he wanted to do with a pitching staff, and he's been able to execute that game plan uh, from A to Z. Um, I've been thoroughly impressed with him. Uh, you know, it's one thing to know your stuff, but then there's another side to coaching that I call by osmosis. And it's just sometimes when you're around great, great players that are now coaches, that has a way of rubbing off on you as well. And uh, B.J. Ryan had that effect a little bit. And you, you see that. For, so sometimes for the even the you could not coach anything, but just by being around them, it makes them a little it, – it, it, there's a little more swagger in your step. There's a little more confidence there. Uh, it'd be like if, if I played golf with Kevin every day or if I played golf with Tiger Woods every day, what's going to make me a better golfer? <laughs> Probably hanging out with Tiger, right? <laughs> I'm not going to lose any money to him, but, yeah. It's just that osmosis thing. You said something earlier about how you like using your imagination. Gunner's very analytical and uses all the numbers and so forth. How does how do you mesh that together? Gunner's analytical, but it's only uh, 
that's I think that's a calculating strategy on his part. Gunner's also an alpha dog. He's got a great instinct and feel. And uh, I watched him set by him yesterday, call pitches. I think we're on the same page with every pitch, but one maybe. And, uh, you know, I think Gunner using analytics is, is, is calculating on his part is smart. Uh, but trust me, that's probably about a third of what he does. I think the rest of it is just experience, Coach Robe, uh, having been through that system before. And and just the, the kid can play, man. You know, if I was still here when he showed up, I signed him. Uh, he'd have hit for us, too. Uh, I signed him to play first base and pitch. And he's a player. And he understands the game and, and understands the, kind of the finer points of it and the ebbs and the flows. And uh, he understands how to set hitters up. And he also understands how to build confidence. And I think that's what he's done a great job of. Coach, earlier um, earlier in the season, we spoke to the football team, used the term uncommon savages. How do you define an uncommon savage? And how have you noticed that with your team so far? Well, that's been us. Us. Get what I just did there? That's been us since Coach Tibb arrived. And uh, Coach Tibb brought that with him here. And uh, he added that to the pack. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, making an impression. It's standing apart from the crowd. It's, it's being who you are and who we are and being unafraid of what anybody thinks about that and then going out and playing fast, hard, and loose and just kind of old-school baseball, man. I know you can't mention names yet, but talk about just the success that you've had in recruiting. Well, I think the fruits of that are showing up, obviously, right now. And, uh, you know, I know he's not here anymore, but Jake Wells did a really good job with a lot of guys that are that are here right now. And uh, so is, has Zach LaFleur and, and Tibb and, and, and Gunner, uh, Carter Munchrath, Bab. Uh, they've all done a great job of getting what we call OKGs, our kind of guys. And I think that's why we have the culture that we have. I mean, yeah, we work extremely hard through our actions on a daily basis. To me, that's all culture is, just leadership and action on a daily basis. We work hard at that uh, to inspire and motivate these these dudes. Uh, but it begins with getting them out of the right families, right households, and, and uh, identifying can they play for us. And we've done a really good job of that. Uh, it looks good on paper, Kevin. They all do. But like I was just telling Evan back there, it's – you're still a year to two years out, you know, of, of what, what type of fruit are we really talking about here? And, but they all fit what we do. It would just be a matter of how quick they assimilate to, to what we do and, and being able to go out and do it on the field. If you had to write down your starting line, guess for a starting line lineup right now for February, would outfield be the one that you have the greatest error, chance of error, or how, how do you kind of look at that? Probably. I think we were all, especially myself, really, really, really spoiled over the last two years of uh, the outfield play that we experienced. Uh, we had a couple of balls hit yesterday that we're accustomed to getting caught. Uh, now, Donkey, Luke Uhas is playing hurt. So that's you can't really get a read on that one. He's He's been that, that's a tough kid. He's been playing hurt all fall. Uh, he's got a hamstring. So our outfield's going to be good, but w we've been spoiled with with having uh, the guys out there that we've had out there. There's, you know, all those spots are wide open with the exception of Higgs's. You know, he's going to play. Uh, that's the good part about our lineup is there's four, five, six of them that are they're just going to play. And and so there's three three to four other spots that we got to manage. I think you could see Kevin us use that outfield uh, to to get some bats in the lineup. Now, Coach, obviously I know there's still four months until the season starts, but what are your preliminary thoughts on, on your schedule for the season and how it's shaping up? Coach Tibb and Coach Bab, you know, we set out. Uh, me and Coach Tibb visited and along with Bab a couple of years ago to revamp our schedule. We didn't like where it was at. We knew we had to run a gauntlet just to get us toughened up and, and gain, uh, you know, go through some highs and lows and uh, then look up and it's still a doozy and, and us swapping over or, or bringing some teams into the, I say swapping leagues, it feels like we did because now it's, you know, it's top five league in the country. Uh, we, we looked at the SEC model a little bit better and, and uh, studied, you know, what were the, the 16 teams that were left in Super Regionals? This happened two summers ago. Uh, what their schedule look like? 
and and we set out and Tib and Bab set out and they did it to create a schedule that is a a lot more home games. Uh, B will keep you confident during the week and uh, C uh, still maintain a really good RPI, which there's an art to building that and you've got to be connected and, and both those guys have deep connections all over the country. So uh, and teams got to want to play you. And we've done a great job of having a really good RPI and being a quality opponent for other teams. We have a good schedule. We have a good schedule. I'm excited about uh, our schedule and where we're at. I'll close with this. Congrats to Dan McDonald on uh, being an HOFer, man. We're all proud of you, and that's a huge accomplishment and achievement. And I thought you did a great job the other night.